The move was run from the tech shop. John did much of the design work on an early Mac Plus. This poor machine was stretched to its limit to handle all the room designs and cable lists. We hired several temporary technicians to help with all of the work. Even with their help, the techs were working 20 extra hours a week for six months. Here we see patch bays and cables being put together in preparation for the move. Hi! Hi, future Hello. Universal employees! Hi! <laughs> the schedule was set to a fast pace. The construction of the wall started before much of the design work had been done. John coordinated all the design work and the move. You can see how John was enjoying running the project. This is how John normally looks uh, for the last month and a half now. <laughs> when? Really? No! We're busy kind of taking it apart right now. You're seeing the studio be carnage right now. All the peripheral gear that's uh, portable, the PPG, the portable peripheral gear, portable peripheral gear. is uh, was here, well, but used no to be longer. Here, no longer sits here. There's... It should come out. A lot of glare there. <laughs> Total destruction. Yeah, you still can't see. Oh yeah. Oh hey. <laughs> here we are in Studio B. Yeah. Ooh. Notice the destruction. To avoid shutting down the whole recording business, rooms were moved a few at a time. We had sessions going at two locations at once, keeping as few rooms shut down as possible. The number and type of rooms at the new location didn't match the old, so equipment couldn't simply be moved one room at a time. Coordinating the move of the equipment was very complicated. The recording consoles were so large that they were always hard to move. Here the console is being eased down onto the top of the elevator for a trip to the 16th floor. One of the building equipment engineers had to ride on top of the elevator with the console to help steady it on the trip up. Here we see the console come off. Up ramp. Two feet. Okay, yeah. Then up comes the elevator and the engineer gets off. Then up comes the elevator some more and the operator gets out. I left the camera sitting out so that others could help capture the move. John Armstrong became famous for Armstrong Cam, flying through the rooms with dramatic narration. The Sinclair room is empty now. The carnage is obvious. Things callously ripped out. Cables strewn everywhere. An ugly scene. Not one for those with weak stomachs. Is it going to get out the door this way, folks? Uh, well, it looks like that. Spin it so we have I don't know. The tape right yeah. There's a tape measure. Okay. I'm going to come over to me. Let it let it come up. All the way over. Like this? Yeah, just 
let it slide real easy because we have to hook the door. I mean, the legs. Real easy, nice and easy. Just let it slide easy. Well, no, we're go we have to balance it. The freight elevator at the old studio seemed ancient, and closing the door felt ominous. So, this your first time in prison? The alley behind the new location was not pleasant. It always smelled of the grease tank from Popeye's chicken and from being used as a toilet by the homeless people. The hallway to the freight elevator was very long and sometimes had rats caught in the traps. Here is one of several video sweetening rooms. On the right is a large area where clients could sit and talk on the phone and watch the action. On the left is the mixing console where the engineer and the producer do all the work. This is the Synclavier room. The Synclavier was a combination of a 64 voice music synthesizer and 8 track hard disk recorder. Such enormous computing power required two tall racks of gear and several AC cords to carry all the power. The equipment was kept in its own air-conditioned room, shown here. Here is one of the theaters for mixing sound to film before any equipment was moved in. The large opening in the wall was the end of a large periscope used to direct the projected picture up and over the hallway and into the theater. I'm moving into this room in two weeks. This mess will soon become the machine room for the two film theaters. How long is it? It's a rather personal question, isn't it? This whole bundle, you mean? Bundles here, here. Time for another installment of Armstrong Cam. In a surreal scene, Captain Cousteau finds an underwater grotto populated by electronic technicians. The attic space above the projector bracket was terribly cramped and dirty, so Jim chose to spend forever cutting out the bracket from below. The consoles never fit easily through doors. This one was just a fraction of an inch too big. A little carpentry helped it fit. Okay. Okay, come on up. I want to hook it over okay. here. Man, I'm like six feet. This is a low door. Okay, go ahead out with your gear. Hey! Come on. Do we got everything out of here? 
Eventually enough equipment was moved that it was time for the tech staff to move their headquarters to the new studios. I just couldn't write, like, canister. Canister. Yeah, so Definitely. I was just, I was just telling Greg, yep. Greg, we need a trash <laughs> corner. <laughs> we need a trash <laughs> corner. Because I threw too much shit out yesterday. It's, 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 it's bullshit. Bullshit. No, don't take forget it. After packing up the important things, we found that we had a lot of stuff that was just not worth moving. There was a large party for everybody to say goodbye to the old Studio A. While people were partying, the tech staff was busy in the control room tearing out the equipment. Universal owned a huge piano, a nine and a half foot Imperial Grand Bosendorfer. It was too big to put in the freight elevator, so it had to come out the window. They removed a wall panel to the front office and wheeled out the piano right in front of the studio manager's desk. I like this footage, since it is not often one gets to see a grand piano dangling from a rope. The largest and heaviest console was the Neve. We used a large crew of both professional movers and universal staff to move this beast. Of course, it didn't fit through the hall without a little carpentry work. The Neve had to fly out the office window too, just like the piano.
We recycled much of the cable from the old studio. We were able to reuse most of the stubber motor control cables from the film department, saving much time and wiring at the new location. Jim was a master at pulling cable. Here he set up a system to pull 10 ribbon cables at once, all of them to be used for machine remote controls. This is before the days of serial control cables. You stuck? No. Just trying to get ready for a session in this room tomorrow morning. <laughs> Believe it or Believe not. Believe it or not. <laughs> and it's getting close. And it's getting really silly. This is the view of the machine room. The day before our first session. Not entirely organized. I like John's choice of clothing here. Even some of the recording engineers helped out with the wiring once their rooms were shut down in Walton Street. Okay, we actually need, we need three versions of how safe. Three versions of how safe? I want to need one because it's going to be blank tape we're starting with. I'm talking about video sync versus time click sync. You don't want to hear technical yeah, talk. Yeah, this is boring. This this is posterity boring. Will, not met, will not care a bit about this. Here is a section of the original building blueprints. What looks like stairs are the balcony section of a large auditorium. This area was later converted into video and audio studios. Floors 14 and 15 were used for the video studios, and 16 in the bridgework area above became the recording studios for Universal. The back of the control room of Studio A was set partly in the balcony area. This gave a natural raised seating area in the rear of the control room. This is Studio A, the main music room. The wood floor is the empty control room, while the tile area is the studio. Above, you can see how the bridgework intruded into the recording space. This was a problem for soundproofing. Each studio was pre-wired as much as possible before the console was brought in. We would set up computers wherever there was room to continue preparing the wire connection lists while the construction went on. There was a nice stairway down to the game room for the video studios and the new tech shop. The techs got plenty of exercise on these stairs. The techs felt underappreciated. We were pushing hard for Top Gunner for the game room or some token of appreciation. Slash first. Get it on. There you go. And we're gonna like try to fix things. So the first thing you need to be a tech is a proper attitude. And the proper attitude of a tech is that there is no proper attitude to be a tech. It's an impossible job, but somebody has to do it. This is fine. This machine's fixed. Yeah, what what was wrong with it? Relay? It's a relay well, and we had a relay with a pin bent out, and we had see, this also normals into into here, you know, the console. And it was like shorted together, right? Eh? Uh, so we dead patched them, you know. Once again, we gathered a large crew to move the knee.
There was a tight corner in the hallway where the console had to be tipped up on its end, pivoted, and tipped down again. Fortunately, there were very high ceilings in this area. Carnival Crime Track number one. 